In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create an online store with Webflow's Visual CMS and Foxy's e-commerce platform. We're going to start in the Webflow dashboard. Let's load up our site and then click on Custom Code. Here you can add custom CSS and JavaScript to your Webflow website. Head over to the Foxy administration. We're going to click on Sample Code under the Store column in the navigation. Let's copy the snippet from Step 1. The loader.js file is needed to store customer sessions and load the side cart once a customer clicks on Add to Cart. Now head back to the Webflow dashboard. Paste the snippet you just copied into the footer code section, save changes, and let's go to the designer. We're going to start by creating our collections. Click on the collections icon and let's create a new collection. We'll start with our product categories. Name the collection and then provide the URL for individual product category pages. In this case, simply put category. All we need for this particular collection is the name, so we're good to go. Now let's add our different product categories to the database. Now that we have our categories added, let's create our products collection. Let's name the collection and provide a URL for individual product pages. Now let's add the collection fields. The name field is already provided, so let's add a field for the price. And now the description. In the product code, the product category, which is a reference to the categories collection we just created. The product image. And finally, we're going to add an option to either feature or not feature the product on the home page. Of course, you can change or add any fields in your product collection. Now let's create our collection. With the collection created, we can add our products. With all of our products and product categories added to Webflow CMS, we can now start designing our online store. Everything I'm about to show you is just one approach. Feel free to build and design your online store how you see fit. We'll start by adding our page header. This will house our brand, navigation, and mini cart that can be clicked on to view contents of cart. With the navigation set up and styling in place, let's add our view cart link. We're going to add an embed to the nav menu and paste in the snippet of code included on this tutorial page. There are a couple of things you'll want to customize in the snippet. First, ensure you have updated the link with your Foxy subdomain. And second, give the link the same class that your navbar links have. Let's save and close the embed and give it a class name. Apply a style of display inline block so the view cart link will sit nicely next to other navbar links. Since we're going to use the header on other pages, let's go ahead and make it a symbol. Before we start adding dynamic content, let's first create our main content area and page title. With our main content section in place, we can now create our category navigation that will be dynamically populated with our product categories. We'll start by adding a div with the class name Category Nav. This will allow us to apply basic styling to the category navigation container. Next, we'll add a dynamic list for each of our category links. 
Choose the Categories collection and assign a class name to each dynamic item. We'll add some left and right margin, along with making each item display inline block. Select the category nav div and center align its content. With a dynamic item selected, add a link element and populate the text with the category's name. Choose the Category Detail page for the link destination. Now let's add some styling and create a reusable symbol for the product category navigation. Now it's time to create our product grid. Let's add another dynamic list that pulls data from the product's collection. Choose how many columns you want your grid to have. Select the dynamic item and add a link block element. Choose current product for the link destination. Let's give the link block a class name and apply some styling. For this particular design, we've added a couple of divs within the link block to house the image overlay effect and product information. To add a dynamic background image, click on the settings icon and select the get background image from products option, then choose image. Click on the background image icon to style the background as you see fit. Next we'll style the product info div. Now let's add an element for our product name. Select to dynamically get text from the products collection. Let's add some basic styling. Next, let's add an element for our product price. Select to dynamically get text from the product's collection. Since we're on the home page, we need to tell Webflow to only show products that have a value of yes for the feature on home page option. Select the dynamic list and click on the settings icon. Create a new filter. Choose feature on home page equals yes. Now let's design our categories template. Everything we've done so far can be reused with just a couple of minor changes. Select the container of your content and copy. Click up top to change the page. Choose Categories Template. Go to your symbols and drag in the header symbol. Below the header, paste the content we just copied. Now we need to make the content relative to the category page shown. Select your page title and click on the settings icon. Choose to get text from the categories collection and then choose name. The products currently shown are filtered based on the filter settings we set up a moment ago. To only show products related to the current category, select the dynamic products list and click on the settings icon. Remove the current filter and add a new one. Choose product category equals current category. Now we're ready to set up our products template. Click on the pages option at top and choose products template. Go to your symbols and drag in the header symbol. We'll quickly add our container divs. At the top of the page, we want to add a backlink that dynamically displays the product's category name and takes the visitor back to the category page. Once you've added your link, set the link destination as product category. Let's add some basic styling. 
We'll add a separate span element so that part of the link text can be dynamically populated with the category name. Select the element that you want the category name displayed in and click on the settings icon. Next, turn on the Get Text from Products option and choose Product Category Name. Next, let's add our product image. Add an image element, give it a class name, and apply basic styling. Click on the Settings icon. Turn on the Get Image from Products option and choose Image. Now let's add our product name and price. Add a text or heading element. Turn on the Get Text from Products option and choose Name. Now let's apply some styling. We'll follow the same steps for the product price, choosing Price for the Get Text from Products option. For the product description, let's add a rich text element and choose Description for the Get Text from Products option. The last piece of our product page is the Add to Cart button. Add a button element and apply preferred styling. Now that we have our button styling set, we can add our dynamic Add to Cart button. We'll start by adding the HTML embed element. Next, let's head over to the Foxy admin to copy the link example from step 2 on the sample code page. Once copied, head back to the Webflow Designer and paste in the text you just copied. We'll need to give our Add to Cart button the same class name we gave the button element a moment ago. The product link consists of your Foxy store subdomain and product parameters separated with an ampersand. Replace each product parameter with Webflow's dynamic field by selecting the value, clicking on Add Field, and choosing Matching Field. You can add as many standard or custom parameters as needed. Modify the link text and save embed. You can now delete the first button element we created. With everything ready to go, we can publish our changes and view our online store.